Given all of the craziness that has been surrounding OpenAI, it has reinvigorated my search for open source models so that I can run them locally without ever um, fear of having to, you know, maybe switch to a different API, so on and so forth. So that brought me to a new model that I found that I can run locally. And for me, the important thing is an ability to be able to code. So I found that there is this deep seek coder model that is supposed to be pretty good at coding with a level that is performing on par or better than GPT 3.5 turbo. So this is pretty cool to see for the 33 billion parameter model, which will fit on my GPU because I have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So I'm going to go ahead and download the blokes AWQ quantized version of this model and we'll get it up and going. So I've got a start quick batch for my text generation GUI. I'm using the Ubabuga one and um, this is pretty good. I did test it with um, Mistral earlier. And so we're just going to download this model. So what I can do here is put in the link and then I can go ahead, slap on download and it's going to download this. So I'm going to let it download and then I'm going to test it out to see how good it is. And so here you can see it is downloading. It's going to be quite huge. So um, it might take about an hour for me to get this up and going. Alrighty, and looks like everything is done downloading. So let's go ahead and uh, refresh. And we have now this deep seek coder. So audio auto AWQ looks like, and then I'm gonna load it here. So here it's loading and it'll tell me when it's finished. Here we go right here. Alrighty, so it look, looks like it loaded the model in about 20 seconds. So I can now head on over to the chat option here and um, get going with it. So I guess I'm going to try out a couple of things first just to, you know, test the waters real quick. Let's just say I want to create the game of snake in Python. Can you give me an implementation of this? All right, let's go ahead and generate that. <laughs> okay, so I don't believe this is correct. Um, there has to be something I'm doing incorrectly. So, all right. So it looks like we have it going here. And so I went over to um, the bloke, the community section here. And I believe uh, the what you have to do to load this is turn off no inject fuse attention. So once that was turned on or once this checkbox was turned on, I was able to load the deep seek coder. And here it is going now. So let me go ahead and increase the the max new tokens. Um, and let's just go ahead and regenerate this. All right. And while it's generating, um, I'm going to open up a new instance of VS Code and um, get this up and going. Let me go ahead and clear this. I'm going to open up a new folder, DeepSeek test, open up a new file. Let's call this main.py. And then I'm going to create myself an environment. So, okay, cool. So it looks like it has finished it up. So um, it is giving me instructions to install Pygame. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Install Pygame. And then I'm going to copy up this window. So uh, we can get this copy and pasted into uh, VS Code. So now that that's done and installed, this is here. Save, run, and let's see what happens. Okay, cool. Oh, and I died. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. All right, cool. All right, sweet. It's working. So, they, I mean, this is an example of uh, a piece of code that they use as one of their, um, I think, like examples uh, that it's capable of doing. So, this is cool and awesome. We have a game of Snake. And I want to see if it can reiterate and edit this code um, as this is what I would do with like GPT-4, for example. Can you edit the code so that there is a score at that at the end of the game, there shows something like you died with a score of enter score here. All right, so if it can do this, this will be very useful because this is how I go about using GPT-4 um, to 
re-clarify and redo things in the code. Okay, cool. So it finished and it says um, it's going to output a game over message for me when this is done. So let's just go ahead, recopy everything, paste and play. All right. So, okay, game over and score. All right. So I want to do one more iteration on it to see if it can fix that as in the screen, um, the score is cut off here. So let's take a look at it real quick. The score is cut off and we can't see it. So let me describe that to the model. The score is cut off and the window automatically closes after. Can you leave the window open with an option to continue and make sure that the text is properly within bounds of the border. All right, one more generation. All right, and here's the last prompt that I'm gonna do on the snake code. Let's go ahead, get this back in here, copy, paste, save, and then run. Okay, so this this game of snake is broken and it's not running. All right, so we're gonna give this for a pass for creating snake the first time, but then a fail for iterating on it. So, and actually I just restarted it uh, one more time to see if it would write the game snake and I got this new updated code. So we'll see if this one is capable of it. Alrighty, it looks like it got an error and then I want to see if it can refix this, if it can fix this error. Um, if it does, that would be a success for the second time going through this iteration. All right, so we need to initialize snake body after snake position. So let's look up snake position and initialize this here. Okay, cool. And then let's run this now. Alrighty, wow. Alrighty, this is a little fast. Oi. All right, let's die. And I think it probably displays here, but I just can't see it because it's white. Oh no. It displays it here. Okay, whatever. We're done with snake. It can it can do snake. I think snake is a pretty overused example. All right, me from the next day. But I want to get into some other examples that I would find useful. So the next one I'm going to jump into is maybe how help automate making batch scripts. And so often I consult ChatGPT to help me make batch scripts. So one of them is actually the batch script to launch the text GUI. I have made my own batch script so that it just launches the file without doing all the additional downloads. So it's pretty simple. And what I would like to be able to do is add some of the command line um, options such as like model menu to the command without, you know, having to Add them like this i would preferably like to add them earlier before with some type of variable that i can you know pack and stack all of the different um commands that i want to put so what i'm going to do is just copy this and then start phrasing my question i would like to modify this batch script to add a variable that i can put all of the launch options <clears throat> into for the Python call below. I have a now and then let's say below. I have what is the current script and then what I would like to have. So here is the current would like to have I'm gonna do this I'm gonna stack this here. I'm going to put in a commands commands. All right. And then I'm going to hit generate there and let's see what it says. Alrighty. Cool. So I can go ahead and now copy this into my batch script, save that. And we're going to give it a quick launch. So I'm going to close out of the, um, batch script that I already have launched. And then if I try to refresh this, it's going to be gone. So let's relaunch this. And if it did it correctly, if it did it correctly, it would have um, launched, but it looks like it did not. So I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And what I do need are those single ones. So um, I wonder why it gave me the double percent signs. Um, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and load um, the coder, get that in here. And then the GUI is going to now launch. So. We go ahead, head on over into here. I'm going to say, let me just edit this real quick back to the incorrect one. And then I'm just gonna, gonna relaunch a 
second one. Okay, so we've got the error code here and I'm gonna send it on over. So um, I got this error here. If it, if it recognizes the error, it's going to tell me to remove those additional percentage signs. And interesting, it gave me a different option. So, well, let's go ahead and try this. Let me edit this line, throw this into here. I'm not familiar with this. Um, so let's try to relaunch it and nope, does not work. So yep, it's still not working. I ended up, I ended up getting the same, the same error. Oops, and it looks like it cut it off because of my max new token. So go ahead and put that up and then let me go ahead and regenerate the response. Interesting. So it just gave up. <laughs> so let me tell it the first answer you gave me two signs. Are you sure that is correct? Okay, so that did not work out. And I just realized that it said um, up in the early response, you should use double percent signs instead of single ones. Um, so let me just copy this into I'm going to go head on over to chat GPT as we're going to compare that to that real quick. And I'm going to say, are these instructions correct? OK, and chat GPT's got it correct here where single percent signs are the way to go. And it gives me the correct one that I that I modified it to launch it. So I would say this is a pretty simple one that it didn't get. So I'm not sure why. So that makes it a little bit iffy. But um, let's go ahead and try it on one more thing. Um, let me tell it that it was wrong and see what it uh, interesting so i said here's chat gpt's response and it says you are absolutely right well that doesn't help me now but let's jump let's jump into another example and that's going to be the last one that i'm going to try today okay so this was a repository i was working on yesterday in order to get hi-fi gan put into mrq's version of tortoise tts and i was um debugging this so i could get it into it and I want to see if it was if it would be able to handle some of the error codes that I was getting. So I'm going to go ahead and take this line out and it's going to give me a PyTorch error. So um, let's go ahead and launch this and then open it up in a new browser. So I'm going to hit um, I'm going to hit generate and then head back on over into here. And then it's going to give me an error that I'm going to copy and paste into the deep seek coder to see if it would be able to understand what is happening. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this whole stack and then head on over into deep seek. Let's go ahead and start a new chat. I am running into an error. Would you be able to help me debug it? So I'm going to start with that. And this is going to be the one right here. Expected all tensors to be on the same device, but found there are at least two devices, CPU and CUDA. So let's go ahead and generate a response for that. And I find it weird how the formatting kind of is here. So I don't know if that's going to affect anything for the output response. All right. And here it's starting to give out the response. Check if there's any discrepancy between the devices. Okay, that is a solid advice. Okay, this is um, a good example piece of code. And then, um, so it gave me kind of the solution behind it. So um, what I'm gonna do is copy out this uh, function to see if it can pick out, um, you know, where I might need to, to put it. Um, so let me delete uh, this docs part of the code and then let me delete this part that I commented out and I'm not sure how it should respond because I didn't actually use ChatGPT to solve this question I just had to look through the code uh, line by line um, but let's say um, is there anything any variable in here that might be being moved to CPU instead of GPU which one should I move to move dot to device? And if you're curious on how fast it's responding, um, it all depends. It seems like it's ranging well, like 15 tokens per second to down to 3.5 tokens per second. So it, it's 
generally pretty fast on my GPU, so it's gonna get slower as the context window gets longer, but we're ready, and here it goes. It is processing token by token. So I, you know, the context of this is probably getting um, a little too long. <laughs> this might be a model that if I need to have a longer conversation on, I would probably have to run the smaller version of it, which would be the 7 billion parameter model instead of the 33 billion parameter model. But okay, it's telling me uh, text tokens, auto conditioning, and wave gen. Out of these three, um, it's got auto conditioning, which is the correct one. Now, if we go ahead and take a look in here, text tokens is already going to the correct device, as this would be going to CUDA as well. Wave gen looks like it would already be going to the correct device, so don't need to pay attention to that. But nowhere in here do I have a two device for auto conditioning. So, so if we go to here, there is no modification for text tokens. That is correct. And then here is the line for auto conditioning. Let's go ahead and copy this line while it generates the rest of that. I'm going to go ahead and paste this right below. Um, this is the one that works. And then this one is the one that it gave me, which it should work in this case. So if I go ahead and restart this and relaunch the Tortoise application, let's go ahead and run a generation and see if this resolved the issue. All right, so here we are back in Tortoise. Let's go ahead and start a generation, head on over into here and um, wait and see if it finishes up. Oh, sweet, it's working. Oh, well, that's cool, okay. It is indeed working in this case. So here it is, it's all finished. Let's um, go ahead and uh, regenerate just to check out the speed of it. But that is that is awesome. Alrighty, so it did allow me to debug this if I didn't know where to find it. Um, so that is pretty awesome. That is a redeeming factor. Didn't get the batch script, but it got that. So cool. Let me go ahead and restore that line that I had previously. That is nice. I mean, it did give text tokens and wave gen, which already were moved to the correct devices. Um, and I just needed this auto conditioning one. But the fact that it did, it was able to pick it out and I would have been able to copy this line over is pretty cool. All right, but that's going to be it for today's video. I know it was a very limited investigation of the deep sea coder model, but I do think it is pretty good. Um, I mean, it was able to get that last question correct and was able to find which variable to move the device to, though it wasn't able to get the batch script correct. So that kind of uh, confuses me a little bit, but that's OK. Regardless, I do think I will be trying it out on some more um, coding things as I move forward and work on some projects. Uh, I unfortunately can't just pull issues out of my head. It doesn't work like that for me coding wise. I have to run into it and then I will then ask like an LLM to help me think through the problem. So I'll have to wait until that occurs. But for the most part, I think it is a very useful tool to be able to use. And I'm excited that these open source models are getting better and better to where we may not even need to consult something like a chat GPT, which is online and everything will be able to be ran locally. So that is pretty awesome. But yeah, if you found this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing. I do have memberships open if you want to help support the channel. And I would like to thank the members that are a part of the membership already. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and I very much appreciate it. But that is going to be today's video. If you want to see more, let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you later.